to Season 2, Episode 60 of One Man's Opinion. Today I am reviewing Between Riverside and Crazy, the new Broadway show currently playing at Second Stage's The Hayes Theater through February 19th at 240 West 44th Street in New York City. The Pulitzer-winning black comedy, no pun intended, written by Stephen Adley Girgis, is directed by Austin Pendleton and follows Walter Pops Washington, played with sublime simple power and authority by Stephen McKinley Henderson. It's 2014, and Pops has been living in what would be considered by most New Yorkers as standards, a coveted mammoth rent-controlled apartment for decades, and his landlord is looking for any way to evict him. City Hall also wants him gone and is attempting to leverage against him the controversial conclusion of his time as a New York City cop, where he was shot six times by a rookie white cop at a bar that he was hanging out that is off-limits to off-duty cops due to prostitutes frequently working out of there. The official record reflects that the shooting was racially motivated. Not helping matters is his son, Junior, played by Common, making his Broadway debut, who is an ex-con. Well, technically an ex-con. It is probable that he is dealing in stolen goods while living with his father. Also living with Pops is Junior's girlfriend, Lulu, played by Rosal Colon, who isn't the sharpest knife in the drawer. And Junior's friend, Oswald, played by Victor Almanzar, an ex-con who is a recovering addict and unemployed. Trying to convince Pops to accept a deal with the city in relation to an eight-year-long legal battle with the police department over the shooting is his former partner from the police force, Detective O'Connor, played by Elizabeth Canavan, and her fiancé, Police Lieutenant Caro, played by Gary Perez. I've noticed that a fair bit of the media surrounding Between Riverside and Crazy has to do with the amount of profanity in a play, which I think isn't really fair. David Mamet has far more profanity and far more offensive profanity in his work, and his stuff has been produced for decades. Does Between Riverside and Crazy have a lot of profanity? Yes. But should we be making an issue of it in this day and age? Not in this instance. The language is real, and Girgis doesn't shirk away from the acidic tongues of the rugged personalities that fill the stage. Henderson portrays Pop with a considerable confidence and considerable ease about his command of the role. He never has to get too boisterous or aggressive. His seasoned authority as the senior figurehead of the household never requires anything more to maintain the respect of the people within. Even when Junior gets mad with him or when Caro tries his patience, he takes them on with a deft but raw dignity. The humor of Girgis's text is dark, yes, but not so much that for the most part you don't feel uncomfortable laughing. The darkness of the script comes from the dramatic moments and how humor can find its way into any moments, even the most traumatic of situations, and there are several. Between Riverside and Crazy has a deftly thought-out plot with striking and poignant political commentary on racism, recidivism, the legal system, and eminent domain. Though that's never mentioned, it seems like that's what Girgis is going for regarding the landlord wanting Pops evicted. But sometimes the play spins its wheels a tad too long. As much as I enjoy Almanzar's performance as the mentally unstable Oswald, he tends to ramble way too long, and the scenes where Caro and O'Connor try to convince Pops to settle with the city really drags. This doesn't help that it appears that Perez wasn't completely comfortable with his lines yet. He'd just taken over the role on January 20th, and he was tripping over a few of them. I get it. It's one of those things that happens where an actor... Uh, takes over a role and uh, has to kind of catch up to speed. Uh, but it it did kind of hurt the play, particularly in the second act when they return to the house after Pops has been bedridden after an incident I won't spoil here. As I said, Henderson's performance is spectacular. There's a great brief appearance by Maria Cristina Oliveras in Act 2 where she plays a church lady with a risque side and maybe an extra secret or two. Aside from Perez tripping over lines, the rest of the cast is good. They are kind of playing archetypes, but they make them their own. Walt Spangler's scenic design is rich and detailed. I did find it curious as to why he chose to have the stage's rotating set system exposed to the audience with the wheel casters visible versus the more traditionally hidden turntable, but it wasn't necessarily distracting, just a curiosity. 
Another curiosity is how high the set goes. The kitchen cabinets are doubled up and so high it's a wonder anyone can reach anything up there. I lived in New York City for 10 years and I'd never seen any vaulted ceiling homes where the kitchen cabinets were so high they could only be reached by members of the New York Knicks. I'll concede they may exist, but I've never seen them. This production of Between Riverside and Crazy is really good. Henderson is brilliant. I can't say enough about how perfectly he plays his character. Funny, mean, but always playing it close to the vest enough that he never lets on what his end game is at any moment. A couple of scenes are a little long-winded and the rest of the cast is overall good. If you're thinking about seeing it, for nothing else, see it for Henderson, who gives a can't-be-missed performance. But I am only one man's opinion, so be sure to leave yours in the comments below. If you want to see Between Riverside and Crazy, I'll leave a link in the description where you can get ticket information. You can support my channel by liking, sharing, and subscribing, and click the notification bell to be alerted to future reviews. My next review will be I Hate Hamlet at Music Theater of Connecticut. Thank you for watching, and I will see you at the theater.